You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Oro, and this is episode 83, Why You Need a Digital Lifestyle Business Now. Hey, what's up and welcome back to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Oro, and we've got a return guest today, Kevin Geary. He's the founder of SixFigureGrind.com and most recently, the 250,000 Society. I think he calls it the 250K Society. Uh, Welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs, Kevin. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, uh, listeners will recognize Kevin from episode 70, where we talk about everything you know about food is wrong. But I had to get Kevin back on the show because there's this concept of a digital lifestyle business that he's been promoting on social media and on his podcast and on his websites. And it really clicks with me, someone who's a digital entrepreneur and nomad and loves the idea of you know, build a business that takes care of you and your family and it, you don't have to build the next Microsoft or Apple. So Kevin, can you give us a brief background of who you are and how, what is the six figure grind? Yeah, so that is my my current mission is to help anybody who's interested. If they have, if if you're out there listening and you have some entrepreneurial blood inside you, and you want to take advantage of what I see as the biggest opportunity of 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 the history of the human race, really, when you look at it, like the ability to build an online lifestyle business that, like you just said, takes care of yourself and your family, yet you don't have to go to the length of building some massive thing that has a bunch of risk and that you need venture capital for and all of this other stuff, right? It's just an online business with very low overhead that you can manage uh, doing something that you love and it doesn't take a ton of your time. It gives you location independence. It gives you financial independence. It gives you schedule independence. There isn't really, uh, when we talk about like freedom, there isn't like really a way to get more freedom than that, especially if you compare it to conventional uh, landscape of business right now where most people are married to a location and a schedule and they have to ask permission, you know, if they want to travel the world or something for just a few days even, right? Like there is no freedom in that model. This would be the ultimate freedom building an online lifestyle business. So- and My mission did, is to help help people take advantage of that. Yeah, and did you previously come from the corporate world? Not the corporate world, but the brick and mortar world for sure. Uh, so you know, the my the very first real. Uh, established business that I built. I've been an entrepreneur pretty much my entire life, uh, but I was a co-owner of a martial arts studio. So I built myself a location and a schedule, and I, I basically built myself a job. Right. And I did not like the martial arts industry the way that it was headed as I got towards the end of that journey. Uh, a lot of selling out. I was partnered with a guy that um, just wasn't a good fit for me. Um, and, and I wanted out, right? And I saw the internet as an, a way to do that. And I started building online businesses. And so since 2013, 2000, I would say August, I think it was August 2013, is the month where I got rid of that other business, that brick and mortar uh, martial arts studio, went online full time, and I've been supporting myself and my family of five online full time since then. Yeah, I, I actually remember that. Um, I was one of your clients back then. I, I, I kept up with you on the School Sucks podcast. I think you were a semi-frequent mm-hmm. guest on there. Yes. Um, so yeah, you're right. You know, Liberty Entrepreneurs is all about creating and building liberty in your own life. And I completely agree with you as someone who has built a, a digital lifestyle business myself, Liberty Virtual Assistance. And I came from more of the corporate or brick and mortar world where I sat in a desk every single day doing almost the same thing every day with slight variations. And I would have pinned up pictures of like Thailand and Honduras and all these places that I told myself I would travel to. But the issue, the problem was I only got two weeks every Mm -hmm. year of vacation time. And, And while I knew all, it was voluntary for me to be there. I didn't feel that I was truly free until, like you said, I started building this online business. So let, let's get down in the nitty gritty here, Kevin. I know that you create a lot of content and yep. high quality content. Let me give you props on that. As someone who has created and struggled with content, you offer a lot of high quality content and the value of the content that you create is 
always actionable, which is something that I really appreciate. So let, let's just talk about some of this content that you've created and, and why you give away what seems like really valuable inside tips for free for people, because doesn't that kind of just educate potential competition? You know, it kind of does in a way. It depends on what your strategy is, right? Uh, my strategy online primarily has been a content marketing strategy. So for those who aren't familiar with that term, it's the production of content and that content shows up in a way that's very helpful for your target market. And when people come across that content or they search for that content on Google, for example, and that comes up as a search result, they click on it, they consume that content, they like what they hear, they like what they see, they want more, they start following you right? You start to build an audience, you build a tribe, and then that is just basically attention at the end of the day. And when you have somebody's attention or lots of people's attention, you can monetize that attention. Now, the way that I do it and the way that I teach it is not to just monetize attention, right? It's not like, all right, well, we have all these people, let's just run ads and put ads in front of them and, you know, advertisers will pay us or like, that's a very, to me, it's a very like, cheap way of monetization. Whereas for me and the way the process that I teach, it's all about building value. It's all about identifying pain points in a, a niche or a market or desires and fulfilling those. So when people pay you, literally you are having a significant impact on their life. That's what they're trading their money for. And uh, so it's, it's not like, you know, when anybody hears, oh yeah, make money online. Okay. They think like, <laughs> sure. Yeah. They think like ads, they think like all this nonsense, right? No, I'm talking about building legitimate uh, online businesses where you are creating a significant impact in people's lives. And hopefully that's aligned with something that you are passionate about doing. That's another part of this that I teach. It's not like, well, let's just come up with an idea and build a business around it. No, we need to find something that you love to do you're passionate about, you're pretty good at, let's build a business around that. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm absolutely gonna come back to that passion because it, it's something that is necessary. But as far as like the foundational steps of creating content, because you know, I did this with Liberty Entrepreneurs, I never thought mm -hmm. about um, cash flow in Liberty Entrepreneurs or making it the business. I know that you've done similar things like, does it seem counterintuitive to a new digital entrepreneur to create all this content and spend all this time and then just give it away for free? Is there like something that clicked for you that's like, okay, now I have this tribe, I have these people's attention, now I can start selling them something? Or did you have the game plan coming in like, okay, this is what I'm going to write about, this is what I'm going to you know, eventually offer them in services or products and immediately up some? Or was it, was it more of an evolution of thought? Well, in, in the early days of building online businesses, it was an evolution of thought, mainly because I was, I was also new. I was learning how to build online businesses. Now I've done it for so long and I've helped so many other people do it that I know a predictable, repeatable process for this, right? And that's so one thing that I just released uh, that people can get for free is called the One Page Freedom Plan. So it's basically a one page business plan for creating an online lifestyle business. And it comes with a, a 90 minute uh, online workshop that's completely free as well. And so that workshop basically goes into detail on all the points of the one page freedom plan, explains why each point is so important and how to create that plan in an effective manner for their lifestyle business, right? So I'm helping people start through that model and to answer your question, like with Six Figure Grinds, so for a lot of businesses, there is a, a journey, obviously, that a customer might go through. So with online business and Six Figure Grind, there's going to be people at the very, very beginning. And then there's going to be people who have been doing this and they want to take their business to the next level or they've gotten some success and they're stuck and they, they want to get unstuck. So I made the decision, all right, well, which group am I really going to monetize here? Like, which group do I really want to serve with a product or a service? And when I was looking at it, it was the people who want to take their businesses to the next level or get unstuck in their business, right? And I'm, I'm talking completely about online businesses. So I can produce. Now, I also want to attract lots of people who want to start online businesses, right? Mm -hmm but I don't necessarily want to make them buy into something to right. get started, right? Yeah. So I'm free because I know that if they use my content to get started and they see traction and they see momentum, 
they're going to ask me for help to get to the next level, right? So if I can get them started for free and gain the trust and show them I know what I'm talking about, I'm going to be the person they come to when they're ready to pay and go to the next level, right? Right. So that, that's how I can create tons and tons of really awesome content, like the one page freedom plan, like the freedom plan masterclass, like all my blog posts and not worry about the fact that it's free. Right. Yeah. It's like the idea is, Oh, Kevin's giving this, this type and this quality and this amount of information away for free. I can't imagine what he's given away behind his paywall. And, that's, and, and then there's a second thing is, you know, doing work with, so inside the 250K Society, I'm working very closely with online business owners to grow their business, right? And every conversation I have, I realize this could never be a blog post. This could never be a podcast episode. It literally takes that environment of working closely with people to change their business. It can't be a one size fits all thing that's just published on a blog. Right. Yeah. It's a perspective building. And, and I'd like to talk about that perspective building because this whole idea of a digital lifestyle business, even though to you and I, it seems obvious at this point, it's still very under the radar. And obviously is. this isn't going to be taught in university classes. And I just saw that uh, Microsoft and a couple big name Apple, some of these businesses came out last week or maybe it was this past week and said that they no longer require a college degree for to get hired uh, as an engineer or as anyone. What does that say to you about where this economy is going? So I, I think for a very long time, the economy, various aspects of the economy relied on gatekeepers of various types. You know, um, the internet has, has brought a lot of that down. For example, what we're doing now was always protected by gatekeepers. Like you couldn't just have a radio show, you right. know? Um, and now you can talk to anybody uh, anywhere in the world as often as you want. There is, there's no gatekeepers. The universities created gatekeepers out of uh, degrees and so on and so forth, right? Um, and we went away from a model of like apprenticeship where people actually learned under other people, gained those skills, and then became the top person, right? That was a perfectly fine model. For some reason, we went to the university model where everybody needs a permission slip to go and do work. Right. And I think the internet has really helped tear that down. And we're, we're going to move back to a model where I think the Googles of the world and the Facebooks of the world are starting to realize, well, the people coming out of universities still need a lot of work. Like yeah. We have to mold them. We have to you know, get them up to speed because a lot of the stuff they're learning is not even you know, hyper relevant to the current time. Or relevant at all. <laughs> or relevant at all. And so they've had all these people, they've realized, I, I think they've had a bunch of developers who are amazing developers and up on current technology trying to get in. And there's just this rule that was like, no, you don't have a degree. So you can't right. get it. Right. Right. And they're like, what are we doing here? Like we're turning away some of the best people in the world because of this rule. Right. And it's, it's, it goes back to, something that I've recognized for a long time in that businesses are going to start getting, especially when everybody has a degree, businesses are going to get tired of looking at permission slips and they're going, and I just put this on Instagram today. I just put a meme about this up today. I, I custom created it. It's on my Instagram channel. Okay. Um, What's the Instagram channel? Uh, Kevin Michael Geary. Okay. Yeah. So you can link to it in the show notes. Sure. Um, but, but it's basically a, a graphic that talks about, no, no longer creating resumes, create case studies. Oh, like they, a, a business wants somebody to come in and drop a stack of case studies on their desk. They don't want somebody to come in and drop a resume on their desk. Everybody has a resume. Everybody's resume say, says the same shit. Yep. Drop a stack of case studies that says, look at what I did. This, 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 and this. And you're hired. You're done. You drop a resume, you might as well show yourself out. Yeah. It's, it's like how what I love about GitHub is like I, for programmers – I don't need to see your resume. Show me your GitHub. You know, right. show me yeah. what you built. Show me what you've done. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm tired of talking the talk. Show me how you've built the build or whatever, right? I mean, even with like Liberty Virtual Assistants, the virtual assistants are even close to the types of, you know, resumes that you get at Google. But I've thought about not even checking resumes anymore. Like, don't even send us a resume. Show us what you've built. Show us who you've managed, so you've, how you've managed them. Show us what tools. Give us a little Loom video or something to show us what tools you know how to organize organize yourself in? Can you work a CRM? Can you work a calendar? Are you familiar with professional emails? You know, just what can you do? Because I don't care what somebody else says you can do on some piece of paper. It's, it's really amazing 
how it's so simple in terms of like just digging in there and working hard and finding a niche. It's not simple to create a profitable business, that's for mm -hmm. sure. But what do you accredit like that mentality, that perspective, that hustle, that grind to just take the time and work hard and just maybe it's not going to be your first or second choice. I mean, not choice, but option. Maybe you're not going to have the, the success that you want in your first time, but what, what is it? What type of characteristics does someone have to be a grinder? Well, I, I think first of all, uh, you, you have to be willing to hustle. You have to be willing to grind. Now, uh, you know, six figure grind, the name six figure grind, I'm still not even like married to it that much or even like, I, I definitely see some downsides to it. I don't want people to think that it's going to be a grind forever, for example, right? Uh, but at the same time, I think the reason I chose that is because it's important that if people are going to do this, that they're willing to grind, right? Mm -hmm. That they don't, because a lot of people, again, hear, oh, making money online, like I just click a few buttons and, and just, you know, it's like an ATM machine or something. And that's not how it works. Like you, you have to be willing to put in legit work. Um, you do have to be able to manage yourself, right? Like if, especially, you know, in the beginning, I don't think this is so much of a thing, but when people start getting success, I notice they're like, it's very easy to just, oh, let me sit on my back porch for a few hours and chill instead of like actually doing something for their business and moving things forward. Um, so, you know, that's something people can deal with once they get started going. But just to get started, uh, the main thing is to overcome the fear. I think there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of baggage around getting going with something like this. And I, and I know that because I talk to so many people who they have an idea. Uh, we've validated it. They've done the one page freedom plan and yet they're still like just not pulling the trigger on it for various reasons. Mm. And so, you know, getting over that first hurdle, once people are implementing and they're going, then I've noticed, you know, like their, their natural drive takes over. And I think that uh, most people, most human beings have that drive inside them to like, all right, if I've got a real vision that I'm passionate about, I'm going to execute on it. The problem, the big problems come in when people choose something that just is like a money making opportunity right. and there's no passion. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. And do you think the passion comes from solving pains? I mean, we're not taught in school to like look at pains in society and then build a business around solving that pain. Do you think that's it? It's just people aren't passionate or, or bought into the I think pain. That's a, I think that's a huge reason. I mean, and look at like, so you know, it was the whole process of going to get a degree and then getting a job is kind of like pigeonholes people almost into doing something that they're not really that passionate about. Because when you're super young and you're like, all right, what should I get a degree in, right? You might choose something that sounds good at the time and that you think you're passionate about, but then you get so far in, maybe you, and let me use like a lawyer as an example, right? You're trying, so I want to be a lawyer. All right. So we're going to go to law school and all this stuff and you grind and you grind. And then you might, determine at some point, well, I don't really like, that. like, I'm not that passionate about this, yeah. except you're so pot committed at this point, right? You spend so much money, you spend so much time, your parents are expecting you to finish this thing and go off. And, and now we're taking all these people, and we're putting them in positions that they realized at some point down the line, they're not super passionate about, yeah. you know, and then we see uh, drive problems. And then we see like the companies are complaining, oh, my workers aren't productive, blah, 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 blah. Well, you got the wrong people in the wrong seats doing the wrong thing. Right. And if we fix that, you'll see a difference in productivity. Yeah. I felt that in engineering. I mean, I, three years into engineering undergrad and I was like, Oh, I hate these Laplace transforms and finding the, the voltage and current around all of these nodes. And I'm like, well, I just, I have to do it now. It's like the sunk cost fallacy. You know, it's like I put three yeah. years into college and you know, $150,000 up to that point, I have to graduate. And then you work in a cube and you're like, my God, I can't believe that this is what I thought I wanted to do. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. I went to, I went exactly. to computer engineering school thinking that it was going to be fun like what I was doing in high school, working for Staples, right? Like Office yeah. Max or something like hooking up hard drives and putting in deep CD burners and stuff. I thought that was computer engineering because I was young and naive. You know, you're 17, 18 years old. Yep. Compare that with the speed and the flexibility of building an online digital lifestyle business. All right. So this is very important for people. And this is going to be a good, a good plug for you and what you do, right? Because people could easily say, all right, Kevin, yeah, I get it. Like building an online business around something you're passionate about, that sounds amazing. However, there's got to be a ton of stuff 
in building an online business that you don't like to do and that you're not passionate about. And that's absolutely true. It's 100% true that you choose an area of, of passion and expertise and you start to build an online business around that. And then suddenly you have bookkeeping, you've got, you know, all like there's many areas that you don't want anything to do with. Well, guess yeah. what? When you are the owner of an online lifestyle business, you don't have to do those things. You can outsource those things. And now thanks to the internet, you don't have to outsource it with, you know, high cost labor from the United States, like you literally get people from anywhere because you have a location independent business. So if there's something you're not passionate about inside that business, it's not your area of brilliance and expertise and passion, that needs to be done by somebody else. You delegate that and then you focus on your gifts and your vision and you work on your actual business. Yeah. And it, it brings me a question. I know that you do a lot, Kevin. I mean, I, I can tell by the quality of the stuff that you put out that you've got your hands in a lot of stuff. For you, what has that delegation process felt like or been like? It's something that, in my opinion, stands out between okay entrepreneurs and great entrepreneurs. If you're able to remove yourself, claim back your time, and now you've built a little business, it's like an engine that runs on its own. Without you, you can take time away or you can go sit on the porch if you want. But what is that like? I know it's uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. Uh, it's uncomfortable for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you like to have a lot of control, like I do, like that's just part of my personality, it's hard to give up that control to other people, right? Uh, and, and actually delegate the right way where it's, you know, you're kind of hands off with something. You show somebody how it needs to be done and how you want it done, but it's got to be up to them at that point. You can't just sit there and micromanage. And if you do micromanage, you haven't really given yourself any extra freedom. You know, you've just given yourself another person to sit there with. And it's, it's even worse than just doing it yourself if you're going to micromanage somebody. Um, so that's uncomfortable. And that's, that's a, a, an area of growth that I think a lot of people need to go through if they're going to be a successful business owner, right? Um, the second aspect that was the hardest for me to get over, and I consider it a curse. Like a lot of people look at me and they're like, gosh, yeah, you, you've been successful fast because you can do all the stuff yourself. You can build the websites. Like you don't need a programmer. You don't need a designer. Like you, you've got all these skills. That's actually a curse, right? right? Because it means that I'm trying to do everything, realizing that I have those skills and that's not the way it should be done. That's not the way the business should be built. And so people come in to the online business world who are not tech savvy and they immediately create a much stronger kind of company because they don't try to do it all themselves because they don't even know where to start with half of it. Like, so they, they build the business the right way from the beginning because they have to, right? And right. so they don't end up in like a quagmire like I did where it's like, I'm just trying to do everything. And then you try to bring in people at that point and it's, it's like people cleaning up your mess, you know? So that, that's another area where, uh, you know, I had to learn to step away from my own skills and like put other people in the positions. Yeah, I guess it's a bit of a catch 22. You know, it's like early on, you want to do everything because you're learning and you're adopting and, mm -hmm. you know, you want to keep that professionalism high and you want to get that quick feedback loop of your customers or the internet or, you know, people leaving comments or customers complaining or stuff like that. But yep. then it's like, well, are you okay with just building yourself a job so that you don't have to go in? Are you okay? Instead of going into, you know, the office, you go into your home office, like I'm sitting in right now, you know, or is the final goal for you to remove yourself in so many aspects of your business so that you can take that two week vacation and maybe you check in, you know, once every couple of days and that's it. For my virtual assistant staff, I speak to them every Monday morning, their time. So Sunday night, I mean, Sundays are work days, people, if you want to mm -hmm. grind and build a yeah. lifestyle business here. Uh, I check in and I have an hour call with each of my two teams on, on Monday morning, Sunday night for me because they're in the Philippines and we set the week and then they check in periodically. If they need me, they write me a midweek report on Wednesday and end of week report on Fridays. I review them and here we go. You know, if anything high maintenance comes in or priority, then, you know, you, the entrepreneur has to jump in and start doing this. But this whole digital delegation, digital lifestyle business is way easier. You know, something that I've been pushing recently and I, I don't, want to make this a big advertisement for me, but 
you need management experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you need digital management experience. And how are you going to get digital management experience if you have to hire somebody for $25, $30 an hour in the United States, pay the Obamacare tax, pay all this regulations that comes along with U.S. people? Like, how are you going to do that? A digital lifestyle business means you don't have to do that. You can choose to hire Americans or Europeans if you want, if they're overly high salaries and protected benefits from the government, or you can hire someone overseas who has similar experience, but at $5 an hour or something like that. Um, Kevin, let, let's get, let's get real here. How much time and how much money in the first six months do you think it's going to take somebody to build an online business? Like, so, well, if they try to do it all themselves, they try to do it all alone, like figure it out on their own. Right. So they don't have any guidance from somebody that is experienced. Then, uh, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to take a lot more money and it's probably not going to find the success that it should find. If they have the right guidance, if they have the right plan, um, it's, it's so hard to answer. It's, it's, it's very niche dependent and it depends on how they want to monetize. Um, you can get to profitability online very, very quickly. So let's just get that out of the way. There's not a lot of expenses to get started. There's not a lot of overhead. You don't need a big team, right? Um, I've done easily created six figure businesses with one team member, right? Um, and that would just be, when I say one team member, I mean like somebody actually on the team working. Not, I, I'm not talking about just freelancers here and there, right? Because you're going to need like, you know, all right, can I get a freelancer to put my website together? All right, sure. Let's do that. Uh, but that's not a person that you have to work with on a continual basis forever, right? It's just somebody that you hire to get the job done and then we move on. Um, so you don't need a big team. You don't need a lot of expenses. We're talking about, uh, getting your website up, getting hosting up getting an email list, those would be primary things. Um, the email list is gonna be a primary sales channel for people, so if you've got a website and you've got your email list, you don't need much else. You don't need much else to start making money and it's not hard to get profitable uh, with just those components. Yeah, I'm just going through your website here, sixfiguregrind.com forward slash blog, and I just have to read out the title of some of these uh, blog posts that you've read, that you've written. Um, why I switched from opt-in monster convert box. If you don't know what either one of those are, you've got to check out that blog. 10 ways an SEO specialist can 10 X your business. If you don't, if you're not implementing SEO on your website, how are you ever expecting to get organic search uh, from Google and have people find your website without paying for it? Your about me page sucks. Here's how to fix it in three steps. You know, who even thinks about their about me page? Um, you know, you've got, of course, right here, the online lifestyle business, a one page business plan that's invaluable. Like do people even write business plans anymore? Or they just jump in there and try to figure it out as they go backlinking. I mean, you've got so much stuff here. Digital marketing strategy guide is email blast dead and how to send really great emails in 2018. You know, it's just really amazing, man. I I'm just so <laughs> impressed. Scintillating, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, it's just like, but as a content creator, I know the effort that you have to put in, to create stuff like this and to edit it and to give it away. And, you know, I'll, I'll chime in here and answer my own question for me, a 12 hour day for the first, you know, year or at least six months of grinding, I found to be really valuable. And mm -hmm. for me, I felt like, you know, per month with one VA and with a couple online subscriptions, you know, you're looking at maybe six, $700, $700 a month to try to build your freedom. Now, this sounds a lot different than the startup world. Like what's the difference between a startup and a digital lifestyle business? Because I think some listeners may be thinking that we're talking about startups. Yeah, so I think one of the main differences with a startup, and if you look at the traditional startup lifestyle, I mean, first of all, yeah, they're grinding, you know, 12, 16 hours a day. Uh, but most of them are taking venture capital. So there's a ton of money coming in, not from the products that they're building and the services necessarily, just from investors, right? And so now they're bringing people on board who they have to answer to. And they are managed by and put under pressure by. And they're going to build huge teams and they're going to build huge infrastructure. And it all boils down to one word, risk. Lots mm. and lots of risk when you're building a startup in that culture, right? We're an online business and, and yes, 
I've worked many 12 hour days, still work 12 hour days sometimes. The difference is number one, uh, I'm so passionate about what I'm doing. It doesn't even feel like work. Like, and I, and I want to do it. Number two, if I wanted to just take a month off and just be like, I'm not touching it for a month. I just want to sit on a beach for a month. I could do that, right? I could do that. So there's the flexibility and freedom there. The thing is, is that when you do something you're passionate about, you don't want to just take a month off. Like right. want, when I go on vacation, like I want to be still in touch with my business. I still want to be writing. I still want to be recording podcasts because I just, I love it, right? That's doing something you're passionate about. Um, whereas in the startup world, um, just the risk and the pressure is so high. And by the way, the failure rate is so mm. astronomically high. That's another thing uh, that most people I don't think see. And if you look at the inner workings of the startup culture, the one thing that's actually being talked about now is the skyrocketing of the suicide rate among mm. startup founders because there's so much pressure, because there's so much risk. A lifestyle business online it's almost the opposite. There's almost no pressure. There's almost no risk. If you have a job right now, nobody's telling you quit that job and, and jump into an online lifestyle business and grind into, until you make that successful. The beauty of it is that you could literally build it on the side first. Absolutely. Let it get traction. Let it get momentum and then move to it. And when you do it that way, there really is not much risk at all. You know, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. I was about to ask, I built my lifestyle business while I had a job, right? I was getting paid a salary and in my spare time, I thought that I noticed a pain in, in, the, in the marketplace and I built something around it. And I actually bought a service, a virtual assistant service, and I thought they just didn't do a great job and I could do better. You know, is that the mindset? of somebody who's going to build a, a lifestyle business, is that an easy way to like start identifying some of these opportunities? It's like, okay, this is already being done. It's not great. I can make it better, cheaper. I could do better customer support because I feel like people think, oh, I need to invent the next Apple. Mm, yeah, no, I, I actually, when I teach people how to do this, I tell them, don't be a pioneer. Don't be an inventor, right? right? Find a pain or a desire that already exists and fill that need. And so one part of the Freedom Plan Masterclass and the One Page Freedom Plan people are going to see is that it asks you to find and specifically list your top three competitors. And I think when a lot of people who don't have business experience come in, they have an idea and they start to look around and then they, they email me and they're like, Kevin, I, I had this idea, but when I started researching, there's already people doing it. And I was like, good, <laughs> go do that now. Go do it much better than they're doing it, right? If there's competitors, it means there's opportunity. It right. means that there's the ability for this thing to work. If you go look for competitors who are doing what you want to do and you don't see any, that's a really big red flag. Step back, press pause. You probably don't want to go there, right? Yeah, yeah. So there needs to be competitors. Right. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to make it a little bit smoother, spin a little bit faster, a little bit better construction, or just give better customer support. Right. It's amazing how that's There's such a lot a of ways. Yeah. Um, and, and going back to, so let's talk about pains and desires for a second, because yep. there is in almost every niche when there are competitors already doing something, I can almost guarantee that those competitors have not done the legwork of talking to enough people in their niche that they're serving. Most businesses are created with, yes, they identified a pain point and, and, or a desire, and then they built what they thought people needed, and then they've been pivoting since then, right? Mm -hmm. And what the process that I teach is to go in and have legit conversations, and I give people specific questions to ask people, and we look for patterns of not just pains and desires, but deep pains and deep desires, right? And we're gonna start targeting those. And that's how, number one, we're gonna niche down. And number two, we're gonna show up in a unique way. And that's legwork that most companies haven't done. And when you do that legwork, you identify an opportunity that has not been identified. Even though we're in the same niche as these other competitors, we might approach it in a similar way. Mm. We have insight that they don't have. And it allows you to emerge into the market in a way that is just refreshing to people. And they're like, that's exactly what I've wanted and needed the entire time. And they immediately come flock to you 
instead of these other people, right? And so you can get traction very, very quickly. Right. It's that validation thing. It's that validation level that you and your uh, clients are willing to do that most people see as like busy work or extra work or, oh, I've already got these clients. I don't need to do this. But yeah, it helps you get down into that niche and, and look, look like you're putting value first rather than just trying to sell somebody something. And Absolutely. listening, it's amazing if you just ask your customers or ask your Facebook, yes. poll, poll people, see what yeah. people want, and they'll tell you, just ask questions. You know, one thing that I struggle with early being a digital entrepreneur is you also got to be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. You also have to be able to sell. What, 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 in your opinion, how important is that role of sales? And have I overemphasized previously the amount of sales technique or experience that a digital entrepreneur needs? Uh, so it's a, it's a hundred percent. It's important. Um, very, it's, it's probably the most important thing. Now it's hard to talk about sales tactics, uh, and sales strategies. I did a podcast on this where I basically said, I have an extremely high close rate on sales calls. I don't use any sales tactics or sales strategies though. Right. Uh, and I outlined my exact process for approaching these sales calls. But the bottom line is when people hear sales, they, I think, immediately think of like people who pressure them into buying things, uh, used car salesmen, scammy people, telemarketers, and all of that. And that's not, that's not what sales is. Sales is you uh, helping other people make a decision on the products and services that you offer which hopefully are products and services that, like I said a little while ago, create a massive impact in this person's life, right? So if you truly believe in your product or service, then you should be shouting that from the rooftops. Like you should legitimately love to sell people because you know that people got to have it, you right. know? Like if you had the cure for some disease or something and you see all these people with the disease, I mean, you would be super passionate about selling them on this thing, right? That's how you need to approach your products and your services and the act of selling. And if you do it that way, you have a legitimate product, you have a legitimate service, you're passionate about it, you know it's going to have an impact and you can communicate the impact that it's going to have. You've just sold somebody. That's it. That's all you have to do. Get yeah. on the phone with them, get in front of the right people at the right time with that message and it, it just works out. Yeah. Be curious. See if you solve a pain that they have. And if you don't, maybe they're not a client. It's okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all right. Um, yeah, so, so what selling is not is finding random people and pushing your products and services on them, yeah. right? Find the people that actually need it and then you have a conversation with them, right? Hey, and exactly. Lead them along and you both come to the same conclusion that this is what's best. We need to buy this thing, right? Yeah, I, I love the line, selling is not telling. You just can't yeah. tell somebody that you're going to solve all their problems. Like find out if right. you've got the problem to begin with. You, know, you use the word impact and it stuck with me. And we, we are both libertarian type of digital entrepreneurs and we share a lot of similar ideology, but we are in very different situations right now. I'm, you know, a single guy, not married, no kids, traveled the world. I've, you know, but you, you're a family guy. You've got a wife, you've got a couple children. What has the impact been on you now that you have this digital lifestyle business and just what has it meant for your, your family in general? Yeah, it's a great question um, because, you know, we talk about freedom, we talk about location independence and schedule independence and what that looks like from a family standpoint is number one, I'm home with my kids, right? At all times. Um, so I don't miss out on, on their life. Uh, they don't miss out on, you know, me just being gone all of the time. So, and that's huge. Very, very important. Uh, I've been able to have full control of my children's education, right? So mm. it's not like, well, both parents work. All right, we got to stick them in public school and we've got this and we've got that. Like she, uh, my, my oldest daughter is in a local Montessori just three days a week, right? And then we homeschool the rest of the time. And we also, therefore, aren't tied to like the public school system's rules of, oh, you can't travel right now. So, for yeah. example, if I wanted to, we're going to go to uh, Panama City on Thursday, just like two days. 
Uh, next month, we're going to Phoenix, right? So we're taking a trip out there for a week or so. And so I'm just able to take my kids and like, all right, let's get on a plane. Let's head out to Phoenix. There's, I don't have to ask anybody permission, the public school system, a boss, nobody. Like, right. just, we're going to go out there and we're going to use that trip. We're seeing family, but we're also going to use that trip to show them the desert and we're probably going to go to a zoo and we're going to do all these fun, amazing things and experiences and again, it's, we have 100% flexibility. And legitimately, I could stay out there for a month with them if I wanted to right. before we had to come back. Um, that is, again, going back to the ultimate freedom. I mean, what else, what else do you need at this point, right? You have the money. You can go anywhere you want. You can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to ask anybody's permission. That's it. Yeah, and think about the perspective that your children are getting, seeing their father build their own, his own business to take care of the family, and they're seeing you work. They're not seeing you just leave every day and disappear, right. and they have to go shuttle off to public school or something. Just the, the inside perspective that they can get, I think, is one of the lesser talked about you know, benefits of creating a lifestyle business. If you have children, you're going to learn so much about taking care of yourself financially and you're, that knowledge is going to be passed on. And yeah. it, it, it's the best type of school that they could have. It's the internship without having to work for someone else. Yeah, because I'm going to be teaching them. I mean, instead of them getting the perspective of you go to this building, this building teaches you lots of things. And then they send you off to this other building. And if you do well enough in this building, they'll give you a permission slip to go get this thing called a job and you work for the company and then they'll pay you to, to, to your support yourself, right? Yeah. And then you just do that for the rest of your life. No, right. okay. So we're going to do completely different. Yeah. Here's how I make an impact in other people's lives. And I get paid to do that. Right. And here's how I figured out the impact I wanted to make. Now, what impact do you want to make? And let's go figure out how to make that impact. And when you do that, you're going to get paid too, right? And so they're going to learn how to do this, like basically cutting out all the middlemen. Like oh, yeah. The education middlemen, the permission slip middlemen, the corporate middlemen. No, let's just go make an impact in people's lives. Right. Let's just go build value somewhere and let's exactly. create value for the world and value is going to come back to us and we're going to take care of ourselves and we're going to do what in the hell we want without asking anyone's permission. If that's not liberty, I don't know what is. That's it. Uh, Kevin, I really appreciate you coming on the show, man. What have we not covered that you'd like to hit on? Oh, man. I, th I think... Uh... Let's talk a little bit more about the fear, just because I know there's mm. going to be a lot of people listening who are like, gosh, like that sounds so amazing, but, but right. I don't know if I can do it, right? Yeah. Or I don't know how to get started. Or like there's going to, after that, but there's an, a laundry list of things. Sure. Right? Yep. So what I would encourage them to do is go download the one page freedom plan and just stare at it for a minute. Just, you're not going to know, like some of it's not even going to make sense to you, but just stare at it for a minute. There is a single sheet of paper that if you are able to fill this out at some point, this is the roadmap for changing your entire life, mm. right? After you stare at that paper for a minute and you decide, all right, I think I want to take one more step, okay? Go to the Freedom Plan Masterclass. Again, that's free. You don't have to pay for any of this, okay? So you get the one page, you print it out. You go to the Freedom Plan, uh, Plan Masterclass. At the end of that class, if you aren't fired up, if you uh, have any questions, contact me. I will help you out, right? But that's, at the end of that class, you are going to have a clear vision for what needs to happen next. And again, this is the ability, the opportunity to change the entire scope of your life. And you don't have to leave what you're doing right now. Nobody's right. asking you to jump ship. So Nobody's important. asking you to take huge risks. Right. Just go one step at a time. And those are your first two steps. And it's all going to start becoming very, very clear to you how this can all work. Yeah, it can be very scary and very just like vague at first. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, my, I don't even know what to start. How do I even right. get an email list? What do I do here? Like, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm just going to go into work and, and forget about it. And yeah. yeah, and the first part of the Freedom Plan Masterclass is about finding your big idea. So if, if you don't even have an idea yet, the first part of that class is going to show you a awesome. process for arriving at an idea. And then we go from there. Yeah, it is it's wonderful. And I imagine just like everything else you do, this is a very hands-on action oriented type of, of situation. It's zero fluff. It's a hundred percent actionable content. I've gotten amazing feedback on it so far. Uh, so yeah, I think it's going to really help some people. And I want everyone to go over and check out six figure grind, all spelled out S I X figure grind.com. And, and just read how Kevin writes, read like the realness and the bluntness in his tone of writing style. 
is not here to fuck around. <laughs> I mean, he's Definitely not. very passionate about helping you build an online business, a digital lifestyle business. Um, I, I really appreciate the bluntness, the perspective that you bring. I love how you incorporate freedom into everything that you do. And you're, you're for sure a Liberty entrepreneur. And I know that I've learned a lot from you. Um, I learned a lot going through your program earlier, uh, you know, several years ago, a different program, but just seeing how you build and seeing how it's really not that difficult to build once you get some momentum going and you're passionate about it. And if anyone listening to this podcast is fearful or you don't know what the next step is, or you just don't think it's you know possible to build an online business and you're safer in your corporate world, just go download the, the freedom plan and check it out. And it might even take you a weekend, entire weekend to build up the courage to fill out this one page because it could literally change your life. I mean, you know, we talked about Kevin's perspective here and what it meant to be a family man, being able to spend time with his wife and kids and not miss out on their life. For me, not having kids, I've been able to see the world live in Thailand and Portugal and, you know, Panama and all these places. And you just can't do that otherwise. So like, like Kevin says, the lifestyle digital business is the new fuck you money and you don't need to depend on anyone else. If you're financially independent, then what can anyone do to you? Right? So Absolutely. yeah, Kevin, um, leave us with some ways to get in touch with you, please. Cause I know people are going to be reaching out. Yeah. So everything is at sixfiguregrind.com. And, you know, thank you for everything that you just said. Again, like this is my passion. I said a couple months ago that I was all in on this, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I've, I've had some other projects going, um, but this is the thing. And so when people are coming to sixfiguregrind.com, I just want them to know that uh, I am all about getting them to this place of ultimate freedom. So sixfiguregrind.com has everything. Come, come see me there. Drop a comment. Uh, let me know you've arrived and we'll, we'll jump into a conversation together. And is there a community that people can join Facebook groups or anything? Um, I did away with my Facebook group, but um, for various, I'm actually going to do a podcast on why I did away with the Facebook group. Um, yep. But right now, the if you're on the email list, you're basically on the insider uh, community side of things. And then if you want to take things to the next level, the 250K Society is the place to be for the serious online entrepreneurs who are, are really ready to grow. Yeah, let, let's talk about the 250K Society. We've been focusing on Six Figure Grind, which is more for people who are starting to become a digital entrepreneur and like learning their niche and getting into their grind. What is the 250K Society? How is it different? Who is it relevant to? to? So the 250K Society is a, is a premium membership community exclusively for online lifestyle entrepreneurs. So there's no like brick and mortar entrepreneurs in there. There's no start up entrepreneurs. It's all people doing the online lifestyle business thing. And we have a, a screening process to make sure that we're filling it with the right people. And it's also following a mastermind format. So it's very different from other uh, membership communities for entrepreneurs. I think when I, and I did a whole episode on why it's different, but when you look at the landscape of what's available community wise, it's mainly billed in terms of like, come do all of these online trainings that we've put together. That's how you're going to move your business forward. So you join a community, you pay like a low monthly fee, mm -hmm. and then you just consume a bunch of their premium content or whatever. The 250K Society is totally different. So mm -hmm. instead of education, instead of online trainings, we're all about the individual people and their businesses inside the community. And so we do weekly masterminds where we get on a small group calls and you're, so you're in the same mastermind group for months, uh, which has really good benefits that I could talk about like long-term benefits, but literally every single week we are engaging with the people inside saying, what are you struggling with in your business? What needs to happen next? Are you doing that? Like holding you accountable to profitable behaviors, we call them. Um, and so we do have the trainings and stuff, but the trainings are like a secondary thing. We're all focused on diving in to people's specific businesses and moving those businesses forward. That's what happens inside the 250K Society. You know, one thing you mentioned masterminds and I love it. Um, one thing that I miss, and this, these are struggles because it's not all just roses and money and, and freedom and spend time with your family and travel the world. You know, there's struggles that you have as a digital lifestyle entrepreneur. And, and one of those struggles is, you know, 
people who you work with and connection, personal connection with people and, and, and surrounding yourself, finding and surrounding yourself with like-minded people who don't have to go into a job every day. And, you know, I, I've struggled with this and you can't build in a bubble. You can't build all by yourself. You have, you need influences. You need to ask people questions. You've got to surround yourself with people who are, who are either already building or who also want to build a lifestyle digital business. And some of my audience may not be familiar with what a mastermind is. I'm sure everyone's heard of the term, but what is a mastermind and what are the benefits specifically of being in a mastermind? So it's a good question. Um, yeah, there's a lot of confusion around it. And a lot of people do masterminding the wrong way, the way that I look at it, right? Um, a lot of the even paid masterminds that I've been in have lacked organization. They've lacked like a specific vision for how it's going to run. And it's basically like a bunch of people show up on a call and they just kind of chit chat about their businesses and they might have a question or two here and there. The way that I run masterminds through the 250K Society is it's a very format driven weekly thing where we pick somebody to be in the hot seat, we call it. We start out with celebrating wins. I think that's very, very important. By the mm -hmm. way, I think it's something that a lot of people, especially in the US, have kind of been taught, like, don't brag about your success. Don't talk about the good stuff that's happening to you, right? Um, it's kind of seen as like just bragging. Whereas what I found with entrepreneurs is that when you're grinding, when you're working really hard and good things are happening, if you don't celebrate those things, it doesn't, you don't recharge yourself, right? right? Um, and, and you end up just kind of overlooking that and you only focus on like what's going wrong in a business. Cause let's be honest, there's always something like going always wrong. a fire that could, or that could be better. There's always yeah. a fire to put out. Right. And so if you're not celebrating, like there's no balance there. And so you end up running yourself into the ground. Whereas if you can stop and be like, damn, I'm killing it over in this area. Like, and you can share that with other people. It really keeps your like fire going, you know? So we start every call with wins. What happened this week that was a win for you, right? Then we'll go to the person in the hot seat and they get literally 45, 50 minutes. They bring one problem or one thing they want feedback on, one thing that's holding them back in their business. And the other people in the mastermind spend 45, 50 minutes asking them questions, digging into that problem, um, you know, trying to come at it from their own experiences. And then we give advice, right? Here's what I would do if I were in your position. And at the end of the call, the, the person in the hot seat basically looks at all that advice they've been given and they say, all right, guys, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to execute on over the next week. And, we're, and those people are going to hold them accountable to doing that. So <clears throat> there's not a lot of talk or fluff. It's like, here's my problem. All right, I got all my advice. Here's what I'm going to do by next week. Right. It is, it's similar, but very different than water cooler talk when you go into the office, because this is going to be very productive. This is very specific and purposeful yep. rather than just kind of wasting time at the job on somebody else's dime. Um, exactly. But inside the uh, community and the app that we have is amazing app that I'm using um, that it basically has a feed. It's, it's kind of like using, you know, a social media platform. It's very mm -hmm. simple like that. It's on your phone and all that. You get the water cooler stuff like inside that app talking to other people, doing chats and things like that. And like you were talking about, I mean, if you're trying to do this alone, you're going to get to a point where you realize this is really lonely. Like there's yeah, not a lot of sure. like my friends in real life all have traditional jobs. Right. They're not around during the day. I can't just go hang out with people. You know, they're all working. Right. Um, they're all stuck in that old model. So I have nobody to like relate to, talk to, et cetera. So when I can go into my community and now here I am interacting with all these other online entrepreneurs that get it, then it fulfills that need for me. Whereas before not having that, man, it's lonely. Yeah, it is lonely. I can tell people that right now, even traveling the world and seeing waterfalls and beaches and all this stuff can be very lonely. Um, Kevin, do you do any in-person meetups or any conferences or anything or is stuff like that on the schedule? I personally go to conferences. I think that's a, a big part of all of this. Um, as far as like my own members, it's definitely in the works. So the 250K Society is going to be, that's like a mid-tier offering uh, mm -hmm. for me. I'm still going higher than that though. So I'm going to have basically an inner circle uh, okay. that's 
only selected people out of the 250k society they get to come up to that next level and do like really deep you know work on their business with me specifically and then we're going to build out some probably an annual uh 250k society meetup somewhere that's in a really cool location and it'll end up being like a three-day like intensive for moving people's businesses forward so that's an idea that's on the docket too yeah. So let, let's leave with some simple advice here. I am an aspiring digital entrepreneur. I'm working maybe as a, you know, at a desk job right now uh, for a couple of years. I may have that college degree, but I'm looking, I know that this isn't long-term viable for me. Like yep. what, what should my first step be? So first step is the one page freedom plan, then the freedom plan masterclass. And once you've done that, you'll know the next three steps, which is Let's get a website online. Let's get my email list started. And let's start interacting with the marketplace. Because let's be honest, you can have all the plans in the world, but until your content and your message and your ideas start to interact with the marketplace, you really don't know if it's right. gonna be successful or get traction or not. So the sooner that you can get something from you into the marketplace and start getting feedback from people and start interacting, that's gonna be uh, the, the best thing for you to do. Kevin Geary, the six figure grind.com. Kevin, uh, social media links. Can you shout them out? We'll leave them in the show notes. Yeah. So basically, uh, my Instagram link is the one that I'm focusing on most right now. Um, so it would just be Instagram.com. I think it's Kevin Michael Geary. Let me, let me double check. I don't want to give the, the wrong link here. And we'll, we'll get you a six figure grind, uh, Instagram link. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sixfiguregrind.com for that. And it is Kevin Michael Geary on Instagram. So all right. definitely go follow me there. I'm putting pretty much all my efforts into Instagram at this point right now. Very interesting. Instagram. Um, I, I haven't really played on Instagram. I know you've got a podcast too. What's the name of the podcast and, and who's that for? Yeah, Six Figure Grind podcast. So literally just go into your favorite podcast app and search for Six Figure Grind and it should come up. And I'm doing that. I just recently doubled down on the podcast. So I'm releasing three episodes a week. And, uh, like all the stuff that I do, it is no fluff. It's all fire. And I'm, I'm not doing interviews or anything like that. I might do like an interview here and there. It's literally typically about 20 minutes of just content uh, yep. focused on one specific thing to help people move their business forward. A couple of the titles of your previous shows, check your freaking analytics. How much is your time worth? It's a calculation to figure out what your time's worth. Uh, online businesses aren't magic. Delay the sale. Uh, I got fired. What to do if you get fired from your job? And these are some really awesome podcast yeah, here. And that was actually about a, uh, a client that had fired me on a different thing that I was building. So uh, not an actual job, but it's a really uh, good story for people to get some good lessons about. Awesome. Uh, I highly recommend that everyone listen to this show. I mean, I, I couldn't give better advice than what Kevin gave today. Go out and build your digital lifestyle business and tell everybody else to get lost because you don't need a certificate to show that you can do work. You don't need a pass from a school and you can live where you want, how you want with your kids, traveling the world, whatever you want to do. If you want to build freedom and you want a free and flexible lifestyle, it's up to you to build it and you're not going to be given by anyone. And so contact Kevin, get a hire a mentor, go and talk to Kevin. Don't figure everything out on your own. Don't reinvent the wheel. Like he said, you don't have to be a genius to do this people. You just have to want that lifestyle. And if you do, then Kevin's a great resource to do it. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on Liberty Entrepreneurs. I could talk to you for hours, but I got to respect your time. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for coming on, listening to Liberty Entrepreneurs again. And till next time, keep building freedom. Thanks, man.